Well, the federal government may be forced to front an inquiry into why it rejected Qatar Airways' request for extra flights in and out of Australia, 28 extra flights. The coalition is accusing the Albanese government of running a protection racket for Qantas. Will the Prime Minister detail discussions he or his office has had with Qantas CEO Alan Joyce or with other senior Qantas directors or executives concerning the sweetheart deal that has blocked Qatar Airways from additional flights to and from our country, forcing Australians to pay thousands more for their air travel. The Queensland Labor government is even speaking out against the Albanese government, saying that the extra flights would lower airfares, create jobs and boost tourism. Well, one journalist who has been ruthlessly holding Qantas to task for months since August last year is the Fin Review's Joe Aston. He's been searing in his criticisms of Qantas and its CEO, Alan Joyce. Aston broke the stories about the Qantas Chairman's Club membership for Albanese's son, the sweetheart deal, as Dutton calls it, with, with Qantas over Qatar, and also the ACCC no longer monitoring what's become Australia's most complained about company. Today, in his latest column, Joe Aston writes, Joyce has raised the grooming and capturing of strategically important people to high art. He compromises people. He has them in his thrall and they don't even know it. Richard Goida, that's the Qantas chairman, no contest, an absolute layup. And Joe Aston joins me now to discuss this. Joe, thank you very much for your time. Good to be here, Sherry. Now, the most egregious aspect of this, you could argue, is the whole saga with the flight credits and really how Qantas was forced um, by the watchdog to actually stop, stop effectively stealing 500 millions of dollars worth of people's own money. Yep, so those flight credits were due to expire on the 31st of December. Uh, Alan Joyce had been saying uh, last week, uh, I, up to the last Monday when the Senate hearing, he'd been saying that the balance of those credits had fallen from $800 million in, uh, in January to $370 million. And uh, it turned out that he'd been tricky about that language, that actually it's $570 million. And, you know, it's only 120 days or so from expiring. And uh, the Senate committee very effectively forced him to admit that it wasn't 370, it was 570. And uh, the ACCC, of course, on Thursday forced, uh, set, made it very clear that that was a completely unacceptable situation. Um, as you say, it's, it's, it would have been legal theft uh, and it would have been a bonanza of free profit, an extra $500 million of profit. Bear in mind the, the half-year profit of Qantas is about $1.4 bil mm. So it's a huge boost to profit, huge boost to bonuses, um, all by making it pretty much impossible for their, or very difficult at least, for Qantas customers to get uh, effectively money back for a service that was never provided. Um, so was that, that was very rewarding to see the ACCC put their foot down and Qantas... Uh, scurry away from that position. Alan Joyce released a video saying, we've listened. Um, I don't know that that's really true. Uh, I don't listen. There was no come to Jesus Moses, <laughs> come to Jesus moment. He was forced into it. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, he, 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 I'm not sure it's really listening if you know, someone grabs your ear and holds it to the, <laughs> holds it to the microphone. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's just Qantas yet again. They've always got a line. Um, now, let's look at this Qatar Airways uh, decision. So the Albanese government blocked Qatar Airways' request for 28 flights in and out of the country. Qantas had been lobbying, but it's not exactly clear who they spoke to, whether it was the Prime Minister. He denies this. Yep, uh, and that, that was a focus of question time, as, you, as your intro pointed out uh, today. Uh, look, it's a pretty mysterious situation. Qatar applied for the flights in October last year. There are a lot fewer flights coming into Australia at that point. Everyone's trying to ramp up their, their flights because there's so much demand. Everyone wants to fly and mm. uh, every airline has had their, their planes in cotton wool. Qantas in particular uh, said, we can't get our, the number of seats internationally back to where they were pre-COVID until uh, financial 2025. But Qatar says, no, we can, we can add four flights a, uh, four flights a week, week uh, sorry, four flights a day, mm. one a day into Sydney, Melbourne, Perth and Brisbane right now. So you would have thought the Australian government, you know, think about all the jobs that creates in tourism, um, you know, airports, all these people flying into Australia from overseas. Not to mention money. inflation. Well, indeed. And bringing down the price of travel for people uh, to leave Australia, precisely. 
um, you would have thought that that would have been a pretty compelling offer. Um, every single party to that, um, to that decision, every, everyone asked for feedback other than Qantas said, yes, we support this. That includes state Labor governments, state tourism, airports, uh, uh, travel agents, even, um, uh, even reportedly Don Farrell, the federal trade minister, supported mm. uh, that decision. The only party saying no was Qantas. And surprise, surprise, the Albanese government said no.